Okay, hello everybody who's watching this video. Uh, basically what we're going to look at today is a high voltage solar panel factory. Uh, we're going to have a little look at how it works and discuss some of the problems involved in making it and why it's a nightmare and why people kind of want to avoid it. Uh, and basically what this video is, is it's a little look at my version of it, how I did it, what I used to make it, how I got it all working properly. Uh, it demonstrates a semi-working factory. I say semi-working because every now and again it gets bunged up, but we'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, it's aimed at the intermediate to advanced uh, Minecraft players who use TechIt or the Technic Pack. And this is currently a 3.0.3 .3 server. Uh, what this video isn't is a how-to step-by-step guide in producing the high-voltage solar panel factory. Uh, that's not what I want to show you. I just want to show you an example of it working, hence why intermediate and advanced players, you'll be able to pick up what the parts do and how to put them together yourself. Uh, and it's certainly not a look at the most perfect way of doing it. But we'll get to it. Um, yeah, what the problem is, is we want to make these high-voltage solar arrays because they're really awesome they produce 512 EUT uh, which is it's not the same as a nuclear reactor it's nowhere near as powerful I think you need at least three uranium to get that kind of power um, or if you chain react two, you might be able to do it uh, but the benefits of using the high voltage panels is that uh, they won't explode and take half your building away if you mess up which I may or may not have done um, so how are we going to solve the problem? Uh, we want to make a factory and the reason we want to do that is because it's a nightmare to make the high voltage array. For those that don't know, a uh, high voltage array is 8 medium, each medium is 8 low voltage, each low voltage is 8 solar panels. So you literally have to make 512 individual solar panels just to make one high voltage solar panel. Uh, so that's why we want to make a factory, because it's very tedious and it annoyed me enough to make a factory. Uh, so let's go have a little look at the factory floor then. Uh, for all the advanced users, you can probably pick up exactly what these parts are already. Uh, if you can't tell, it's because of the uh, Spax texture pack, I think he calls it. Uh, anyway, if you want that, uh, Google it. Uh, but basically I'll give you the quick run through for those intermediate players out there. Uh, basically what we're looking at is end game equivalent exchange uh, items here. Uh, we have an energy collector, which is sending energy to an antimatter relay, which is then sending energy to an energy condenser to produce uh, our basic items, which we're going to use to forge everything else. Uh, you can also see that there's, um, there's a lot of red power in use here, with uh, filters, transposers, uh, timers, pipes, the whole lot. Uh, there's also a bit of build craft in there and it's mainly because of these little things, the automatic crafting table. And as you can see this one's bunged up and broke, so we'll sort that out in a minute. Um, right, okay, so how this works. Essentially we want the energy condensers to build the raw materials. And if we look at um, the makeup of the solar panel itself, we can see what we need. So we basically need uh, coal dust, glass, uh, copper, rubber, and let's see, refined iron, and also tin. Uh, the way I went about solving this problem uh, was by splitting it into three main components, and that was the battery, the generator, and the circuit. So if you look here, you can see how it splits off into two lines. Uh, all these machines here, and the ones over here. This one on the left, this is the refined iron which gets stored into this box and is split towards the which is split towards the electronic circuit and the machine block which then gets used for the generator. Uh, and also we will need um, cable split into two places which is right here. So this line down here is purely for cable and building the circuit and when it gets to here it splits off to use the cable to make the battery which is what's going on here. Yes, that machine's okay. Back to that. <laughs> uh, okay, so ideally you want condensers to spawn stuff, uh, IC2 machinery to convert it into the necessary resources, and then finally you want the automatic crafting tables to build those major components. Uh, so, yeah. So the main, the, the good. The, the good thing about doing this, uh, using a factory to do it, is because you never have to go back. You never want to uh, 
uh, you know, you can just go off, do what you want, go mine or build your house, and you've got an infinite power source being built right here. Ta-da! You basically need eight stacks of six. Okay. So, uh, what do I need to talk about next? Yeah. One of the advantages of actually using a factory is stuff like this. You now have an abundance of cable that you can just use for other components. Uh, machine blocks. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the machine blocks are used in a variety of things from advanced IC2 machinery, the reactor components, etc. etc. So it's good to have the extra parts lying around as well. Um, but th th there's a lot of problems with doing it my way. Um, We'll go through it right now. Uh, okay, so here, as you can see, the filter has actually stopped completely. And the reason for that is you can tell by this red line because it looks like it's pumping something but hasn't. And the reason is because once the machines start blocking up, like this one has, because to make the advanced machine, you don't need that lot. Okay, and you see it's not pumping it. Oh yeah, I switched it off earlier. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they do they do block up sometimes, and it's good to show it like this, because uh, as you can see, the machine is now pumping the extra resources in. But as you can tell, we were full; we we had too much. So this is why it's a b it gets like a pain in the backside. Why it's so annoying? Because if you don't keep an eye on it, it will just plow all the empty slots up, and you won't be able to make anything with it. Uh, the problem I had was with this, the battery. Um, and it's because of this kind of thing. As some of the slots fill up with 64 of an item, uh, see how the cable hasn't quite finished yet? But if the cable comes in too fast, well, it's all these other slots have 64 in it, then it's gonna stop putting the cable here and here. So, again, it kind of blocks up all the, uh, the machines. Uh, the other problem I had is, uh, I would say, space. Uh, there probably are a lot easier ways to do this uh, if I use better like management of the area. Uh, for example, um, there's a little doodad downstairs and I'll show you how it works. Uh, it's called the regulator. Now, all these pipes are connected to separate uh, energy condensers. And this is my client star charging facility. See? So the reason I picked the Relay Mac 3 is because it's worth 700,000. So it's something I can store uh, as energy. <coughs> and uh, basically this one machine, the regulator, uh, each time it gets a redstone current, it pulls items from anywhere along these pipes. So I've got about 20 condensers, so it can, it can pull 20 items simultaneously. The reason this is a good idea is because instead of having one uh, condenser making iron like I have upstairs and then refining it and splitting it why not just have um, why not just have say eight of them creating refined iron and then one regulator would actually pull all eight out at once so there'd be no problem with how many's actually in the, uh, the automatic crafting table <coughs> um, yeah so Using a better use of space and regulator, that would probably be a good idea. And as some people can see, I mean, look at the piping here, it's poor, it's piss poor. The original design I had, I based it on three floors, with each floor producing uh, a different component, the battery generator circuit. Um, and the, the reason I didn't stick to that is because I lost it. <laughs> Simply put. Uh, and also, the last part of the puzzle, the one which really does my head in, is timing. Now, the reason these machines do get bumped up is because uh, the timing is off. So ideally, if we say had 10 coming in at once per second, we would want the redstone coming in at twice, sorry, uh, once every two seconds, because there's only half the amount in there, which would mean we want the copper cable coming in once every six seconds. But the problem is, um, when I had all the machines working, as you can see, they're all uh, spinning at different speeds. Well, that's what it's like when you're setting the machines up for the first time, when you're getting the layout correct. So, when you restart the server, what was correct will reset itself. So, they will all start from zero then. Um, and that's kind of what the problem was. And lastly, the annoying part is 
build craft. Now, I know build craft is really useful, but I'm going to have to switch this off right now because uh, with redstone, uh, sorry, red power, uh, if the item cannot go into the uh, desired object, like the automatic crafting table, if there's not enough room for it, it'll just spit it back out and it'll go back into uh, the machine it came from, or it'll try and find a different route. Uh, whereas with build craft, it just spits it out the pipe altogether. So then you've got loads of crap lying on the floor. <coughs> and yeah, I think that's all there is to it. So yeah, quick recap. Use energy condensers to spawn all the resources. Use red power to stick them in IC2 machines to refine them into what you need. And then you pretty much just use automatic crafting tables uh, to make the major components. And I think that is all. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.